Social media is a form of media that involves the interaction among people from different parts of the world in which they produce, share, and or exchange information, opinions, and ideas in different virtual communities and social networks. It is one of the most utilized forms of media nowadays as the technology rises. What is the first thing that comes to mind when you hear social media? Most of you would be answering Facebook. According to recent research, out of 2.1 billion internet users, 1 billion are on Facebook. Yet this is not the only type of social media we actually encounter. We have collaborative projects such as Wikipedia, content communities such as YouTube, blogs and microblogs such as Twitter, and virtual game worlds such as the World of Warcraft. This just implies that a large number of us are actually engaged in various gigantic social networking mini-worlds where information is very much abundant. But there is only one question we would like to ask you. Are all the pieces of information you see, click, like, reblog, retweet, and share in social media actually real? or you're just another victim of modern deception. With social media, anyone can be a mediator of information. But the authenticity, we don't know. Misinformation is false or inaccurate information that is spread unintentionally. Uh, misinformation spread through television, I think, uh, radio, because that's the only way how we can grasp about news, about on everything, right? Newspaper, magazines. Uh, when internet came, I think internet is the number one culprit for spreading misinformation. How misinformation is spreading? Of course, they keep on posting, sharing over the internet. It is caused by disinformation wherein it is intended to mislead. It is an act of deception and false statement to convince someone of untruth. When a certain website published the news that the Philippine delegates in different beauty pageants will not anymore will not anymore be allowed to join next year because we have won so many competitions this year. And I was laughing hard at that time because I saw a lot of cruel and really funny reactions of Filipino netizens in the internet. They were so mad at the they were so mad at the news article without knowing that it's supposed to be a satire. Remember, if it's a satirical website automatically the information is false because the, the website is meant to publish publish news that are not true, that have been altered in order to create the effect of being funny or catch the attention of love. According to Elizabeth Lopez, one of the ways to misinform people is through advertisement. She gave an example from the experiment that they conducted, that they met Bugs Bunny inside the Disneyland, together with the Disneyland characters. Through the website advertisement, people believed that they had shook hands took a picture and tightly hugged Bugs Bunny inside the Disneyland, which will never be possible because he is part of the Warner Brothers characters. 
um, misinformation or is very rampant uh, using spams, spam emails. In emails, of course, especially Yahoo Mail and then a Gmail. Even in our email here in Mapua, um, spreading of spams is actually spams is spam emails is considered a misinformation, uh, misled emails. Did you know that the first social network on the internet is called electronic mail? or in short, email. Nowadays, there are 144.8 billion emails sent every day, but 65%, around 94.12 billion of all emails are spam, and probably most of the spams are spreading misinformation around the world. After reading the email, I thought that this email came from the Duet. So, I replied to it, but eventually, that's not the case. So after that email um, received my account and my password, they used my email to send messages. Actually, it's a Polish message, a Polish language that I that I couldn't understand. So I reported it to do it, and then so I, I don't have an access in my email for about a week. I reported it to do it and changed the password. Change, they they changed my password so that uh, person accessing my email will not access it anymore. For the regular internet user like us, keeping track whether or not information given to you is a product of misinformation or disinformation is hard. This is especially the case if you depend on social media websites like Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, news websites to get your day-to-day -day dose of information. Unfortunately, in order to get reliable information, confirmation of said data must be done in order for it to be useful and validated for consumption. This is also the reason why a lot of professors and people in the academe do not prefer the usage of online-based sources for researches and academic papers. This is also why newspapers and other information-based businesses prefer for primary or personal interviews or secondary sources or books and hard media. However, there are actually ways to prevent misinformation in the social media. The first and the best thing you could try is to check the sources of the information themselves. A lot of websites like Wikipedia presents articles that have footnotes and the list of sources located below the pages themselves. Forum-based websites or even news websites present their sources usually before the article starts or right after the article finishes. Most of these sources appear as links and would therefore give you a source as where they got their information. When video streaming sites such as YouTube have users presenting rather suspicious content, comments below the video would more often than not have other users asking where the poster got his information and sometimes other users themselves comment potential sources on this post. Unfortunately, most of the time, you have to do this again and again to each source these websites give you in order to make sure that the information you get is top grade and not manipulated to the extent of being capable of misinforming readers. Another thing you could do is to confirm it for yourself. You can Google the information you want to confirm and look for other websites or posts and statements in the social media for the piece of information you want to confirm. If their data corresponds to the data you have, this more often than not indicates that your original information is authentic. Of course, it is best if you use other search engines like Yahoo and Bing and do the first method of looking for sources to other pieces of data you find. Lastly, is that you can wait for updates for that piece of information you have. When intriguing and controversial enough, official news outlets and other websites will get a hold of that information and also post it online. When too controversial but turns out to be a hoax, it will also be reported either way. If you have enough time to wait, it is best to do this in order to make sure that the information you have is genuine and authentic. Or, if a hoax, can be easily discarded. These are just few of the methods the regular internet user could use 
in order to make sure he or she is not misinformed about the information he or she has. While tedious and time-consuming, this will more often than not be worth the while because not only was your information verified and authentic, but because it also exercises your critical thinking skills. While the internet reveals a lot of information through the social media, and while we gather a lot of knowledge from it, we cannot avoid the fact that there are people who are intentionally using and fabricating false information or disinformation, and those who can misinterpret information or what we call misinformation. Unfortunately, these people and the information they share or gather can also vastly affect the experience of other online users. And while it is a noble job for vigilant users to take note of these events, a few of them are not enough to validate and confirm all this information, especially at the rate when information flows, enters, and exits the internet almost in the speed of light. Therefore, it is also your job as an ordinary internet user to confirm for yourself if the information you have is safe for consumption and usage. It is imperative that you do so because sometimes the wrong information you have can very well decide an important thing or might affect you greatly. You might have missed an important lesson because of a class suspension hoax or you might have answered wrong in a quiz because of misinterpreted internet reading. Who knows? Your life might be on the line.